Well, welcome back again, and we are continuing our meditation of the Psalms, and we have reached Psalm number 4. Now, Psalm 3 and Psalm 4 go together. They are David's experience in the wilderness as he flees from his son Absalom. He has been rejected as the king, and a false king has come in and taken his place, Absalom. And David is now a running for his life. But we get these two Psalms, what David would pray in the morning and what he would pray in the evening. So that is very, that is very interesting. And the last Psalm we did was the third Psalm and we uh, we got an impression of what David would have said to God in the morning. Now, we're going to look at Psalm 4 uh, briefly, and we will see what David would say to God in the evening. Psalm 4, it's to the chief musician. It's written to be sung, and it's written to be accompanied by stringed instruments. A Psalm of David. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? Selah. Selah means pause and reflect before reading on. But know that the Lord hath said, hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There, are, there be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart, more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. So David is praying once more and he reflects on all that has happened during the day. It has been a stressful time in David's life and you can hear the pathos in his heart as he prays. He says, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. And David knew knows that under God he is in the right in this case. And isn't it good that God becomes the God of our righteousness when we trust him as our saviour? That's the meaning, the, the New Testament meaning of the word to justify means to be declared righteous. So God takes a guilty sinner and declares him righteous. It's good to have a God who justifies. O God of my righteousness, thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. So he begins his prayer by praying to God and saying, hear my prayer. Then he thinks of men. And having uh, had these thoughts about God and praying to God, he says, O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing, which is falsehood and lies? Selah. So really he's speaking, he's thinking of the contrast of God and righteousness and mercy and prayer. And on the other hand, there are men who want to bring him down, who want to slay him, who want to reject him, uh, men who love 
vanity. Their lives are empty and they believe in leasing and in vanity and falsehood. Now David uh, goes into the second stanza and he says, But know that the Lord hath set apart uh, him that is godly for himself. And God knows every person on this earth. And he knows everyone who has trusted his son. And God has set apart him that is godly for himself. Isn't it wonderful to be able to proclaim the gospel, to invite men to become a, a to, to be saved, to be forgiven, and to join the ranks of the godly, those that God has set apart for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. We're, we're hearing David's concept and understanding of God. This, should, this is tremendously instructive and helpful. Then it's he, as it were, he speaks to his own heart. He says, stand in awe and sin not. Now, doubtless he's addressing the men who are his enemies, but he's addressing his own heart. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Sila, he says, think about that. Isn't it good at times even at night, to lie in stillness and quietness, no background noise, nothing to distract, no phones, no background music, to lie and to commune with your own heart, to think upon the scriptures, to think of what the Lord has done for you and is doing for you, and just to engage your heart with the things of God upon your bed and to be still. Be still. It's good in Christian experience now and again to be still. And offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Well, today we don't offer animal sacrifices or literal blood sacrifices but we offer spiritual sacrifices. We are a spiritual priesthood built into a spiritual house as living stones. We are a holy priesthood and we offer spiritual sacrifices to God. That's wonderful. And God is interested in the language and the gratitude and praise of our hearts. There be many that say, who will show us any good? Is there any point in going on with this, these prayers and keeping the commandments and living a godly life? David was under all kinds of pressure. Give it up, David. It's all a waste of time. Lord, David says, Lord, lift I up the light of thy countenance upon us. What we need, isn't it, what we need is to have a fresh appreciation of Christ. Lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us, to see the Lord and to be aware of the greatness and glory of his light, to get occupied with him. And as he would have been hiding in the desert and sleeping in the wilderness, hiding from Absalom's soldiers. He, he, his heart was engaged with God. And he said, Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. May, may the Lord do that in your life and in my life to appreciate Christ. Now we come to the last two verses, the last stanza, and there are three wonderful words in these. There's a lovely, uh, uh, there are some beautiful thoughts. There is, first of all, the word gladness. 
There is the word peace and there is the word safety. Now those are three beautiful words. Gladness, peace and safety. So listen again to what it says. Thou hast put gladness in my heart. It's good to be glad in your heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. So David could look at ungodly men. And what makes the ungodly man merry? Plenty of good food, plenty of good wine and drink and partying and so on. And that's the kind of thing that makes the ungodly man happy. But David says, I have more gladness in my heart than those men have, even when their wine and their corn abound. It's good to have an appreciation of the gladness that God has given us. Aren't we glad to be saved? Aren't we glad we're on our way to heaven? Aren't we glad that every single sin is forgiven? That God is our Father? That we're in the family of God? We're on our way to heaven. We're glad. The Lord has put gladness in our heart. And then his last words are this. Before he goes to sleep, he says, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Nice to be able to sleep and know that you have peace with God and you can enjoy the peace of God in your heart. And he says this, his last words are, Thy Lord, Thy only, are the one who makes me dwell in safety. You know, it's good David was thinking of his physical safety and physical enemies. But as we go to sleep even tonight, we know in spiritual terms and in terms of eternity, we're absolutely safe. We're absolutely secure. We go to sleep tonight in safety. So we have those three lovely words that David occupies himself with. Even when his circumstances seem to be terrible, he talks about gladness and peace and safety. Think about these things. And the next psalm we'll be doing, uh, we'll be doing Psalm 5. And we discover that that is back to a morning psalm and it is written to be accompanied by wind instruments. But may God bless our meditation on Psalm 4 and remember, enjoy the gladness that the Lord has put in your heart and go to sleep tonight in peace and be aware of this, that all is well, you can sleep in safety. God bless you. Thank you.